Guys, what is happening? Jumping on here real quick to talk about the new audio features here in DaVinci Resolve 19. I'm watching the live stream from Blackmagic Design. It's actually still going on right now, but these audio features were so awesome. I had to just jump on here and make a video for you guys and tell you about them in case you haven't seen the live stream. If you haven't, check it out. It's awesome. There is so much good stuff coming in DaVinci Resolve 19, really excited about it. But I wanted to talk about some of the audio features that are coming out. And uh, actually, by the way, I'm going to be at NAB in Las Vegas from Sunday through Tuesday. So if you're there, look for me. I want to say hi. I want to meet some of you guys. But let's just get right into some of the cool stuff that is coming here in DaVinci Resolve 19 for audio. Because I'm an audio guy. We love audio. First one up, I got my little list here, is the Music Remixer. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like here. If you check out the live stream here, let's take a quick look and see what the music remixer looks like, and then I got some thoughts to share with you on it. The Fairlight page has exciting new features and effects that enhance your creativity and save you time. Let's start in the Inspector, where you'll find three new AI-based track effects. Music Remixer is an AI plugin that lets you remix music tracks to fit your show. Start by enabling the music remixer on a track containing music. Open the controls and adjust levels for vocals, drums, bass, guitar, and other sources. You can change a vocal song into an instrumental track with a single click. Remix the different instrument levels and even automate changes over time. So the remixer tool here, really cool AI tool here in Fairlight where we can sculpt the music and make it sound the way we want so it fits with our videos a little bit better. We can add in the voice, we can take it out. Sometimes you've got a great track, but it's got some singing in it. You want to get rid of that. And it looks like this tool is going to be able to use the voice uh, dial there to just pull out the voice, right? We can also bring in more drums, bass, guitar, or other instruments. This looks like a really cool tool that is going to come in real handy and allow you to use more kinds of music as opposed to having to find something that, for example, doesn't have any vocals in it, right? Because maybe it's going to contradict or conflict too much with, you know, your speaking or your dialogue in your video. So really cool tool. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to remix the track. So let's say we've got a music track that's like three minutes long and we only need, you know, two minutes of that track. This tool doesn't look like it's going to remix the track for us, so it'll fit with the length of time that we have. But um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe that's in there and they just didn't mention it. I'm definitely going to be digging into that tool a little bit more when DaVinci Resolve uh, 19 is available here because this thing looks pretty cool. Really excited about that feature. So that is a track based effect. So if you had multiple, you know, music uh, pieces of music, you'd want to put them in different tracks and then use the music remixer on them. So really looking forward to giving that one a try. The next one is something called Dialogue Separator. So let's check out what this is and I'll share a few thoughts on it. Dialogue Separator uses AI to give you independent level controls for dialogue, background sounds, and ambience so you can refocus recorded dialogue and lower distracting background sounds while preserving the reverberant field of the room. When you vote Jamie Woods, you vote a real leader. I remember birthdays. Or decreasing the excessive ambience while adjusting background sounds as needed over time. When you vote Jamie Woods, you vote a real leader. I remember birthdays. This is perfect for improving location recordings in active spaces. Will you teach me how to surf? So the dialogue separator there, this is really cool that we've got three controls that we can change the voice, the background, and the ambience of our clip, right? Now, I'm curious to see if we dialed back that voice one all the way to the minimum, are we going to get just the background noise and it's going to remove the voice for us? Because I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that and you just want the background noise. Maybe you're filming some kind of nature stuff and there's people talking along the trail. You want to remove the voices. And currently the voice isolation wasn't doing that for you. You couldn't invert it. So you only heard the background noise. It would only remove the background noise, right? But I know a lot of you guys want to remove the voice. So really curious to see if this tool will do that. They didn't show that here. They just showed how you can reduce the background noise and the ambience a little bit. But I'm curious 
if you were to dial back that voice knob there, will you get just the, uh, the ambient noise and the background noise and not the voice? Will it remove the voice for us? I don't know. We're going to have to play with that once I get a hold of uh, DaVinci Resolve 19 here. But that is one that I know you guys have been asking for. So we're going to see how that voice dial works here once DaVinci Resolve 19 is out. Take a look at the next one on the list. We have the Ducker. Now, you could always automatically duck, but now they made it even easier. So you don't have to jump in there and know too much about what's going on. It's going to kind of do some of the work for you. Let's check this out. Then I'll share a few thoughts. The Ducker makes it easy to get a good mix automatically by using the levels of one track to manage the levels of another track without the need for keyframes or automation. In this scene, the music track is overpowering the dialogue. Just enable the Ducker on the music track and choose the dialogue as the source track. Then adjust the amount that you want the music to lower. Well, use the controls to adjust the duck level and response time. Will you teach me how to surf? The real-time waveform display shows the level changes in the music whenever dialogue appears as the source track. All the track effects are available in the mixer and the inspector for the selected track. To choose which track effects are visible in the mixer, use the mixer options menu. So the ducker effect here it does essentially the same thing as what the dynamics panel used to do, only it makes it way easier for you guys. So if we look at the window here, you can select your track really quick and easy as far as which one you want to be the source, right? So your dialogue track, for example. Then you've got your duck level, and all you have to do is spin that dial there, right? We don't have to worry about working with the different tools in our dynamics panel. You can just set your duck level there. You've got a, a look ahead, so that seems like how far ahead is Resolve going to be checking what's going on on that track that's our source track, right? Then you've got rise time, hold, and recovery, which essentially is the same as your attack, hold, and release uh, in the dynamics panel, right? Only it's a lot easier to understand, especially if you're not an audio nerd like myself. You're really going to be able to quickly uh, create that automatic ducking. And then it's cool that they've got the graph there, right? We can see the graph. We know what's happening. And we can see exactly how our you know music track, for example, is responding to our dialogue track. So I think this tool looks great. It looks like it's going to do a great job. It's easier to use. Um, although you could, I think, uh, essentially get the same results if you were using the dynamic, bleh, 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 can't speak, the dynamic panel. Um, but this just makes it a whole lot easier and especially being able to select your different source tracks. It just seems easier and quicker uh, for you guys to do. You don't have to know a whole ton about audio stuff. So Ducker's really cool. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to using that because it's easier and quicker than doing it opening the dynamics panel and stuff. So, Ducker, really like that one. Next up, we have some AI audio panning. Now, you can do any kind of automation here in Resolve. i got a video all on that. But here, the panning can use a little bit of AI to track things as it goes across your screen because when we're working with our audio, right, it's cool to hear it go from, you know, right to left, left to right, move around your head, that kind of stuff. So check this out. We are going to see the AI audio pan in here and then I'll uh, share a few thoughts on it. Completely unique to DaVinci Resolve, you can now do AI-based audio panning in the Fairlight Viewer using IntelliTrack. You can automatically track people or objects and generate precise pan automation. To track an object, mark a range in the timeline and select the track. You'll find the tracker controls in the Fairlight Viewer. Here, you can enable auto tracking and select the pan parameters you want to track. Move the tracker to the object on screen and start the tracker. You'll get fast, intuitive results without the need to spend hours manually creating pan automation to match picture. Here, you can see the finished pan automation curve in the timeline. Or open the pan window and use the new 3D perspective options to visualize the auto panning movement in relation to the listener. You can also do manual pan tracking directly in the Fairlight Viewer. So the AI tracking works really good there when you have something like a jet or a car or you're trying to create sound that sounds like it's moving past you. It's just little things like that that are going to help make your editing process a little bit quicker. You don't have to keyframe and manually pan it. It's going to be able to do it for you there. So that's a really cool feature there. I like that. It looks easy to use, pretty straightforward. You do get into the automation a little bit, but it kind of helps you uh, get started with that, right, by doing some of the work for you. So really cool, really looking forward to trying that out. And I wonder if that's something that uh, there'll be, you know, features added into the tracking, uh, you know, for audio and stuff like that, you know, as we move ahead, are we going to be able to do more things than just panning? 
I don't know. Guess that uh, remains to be seen here. And, uh, you know, maybe that'll come in a later version of DaVinci Resolve 19, but that looks pretty cool. So the next thing up is um, a whole bunch of updates for Atmos and Ambiaso Ambiasonic, I can't even say Ambiasonic, which is like, you know, sound coming from all around you. Uh, something I'd actually like to get into a little bit more. I haven't done a whole lot with it, but just designing sound in 3D space around you whole lot of cool stuff that they've uh, updated here. Let's just roll the tape here, and uh, I'm going to share a few thoughts after checking this out. This is really cool. Atmos workflows, along with full support for recording, mixing, and delivering ambisonic spatial audio. Ambisonics is a full sphere immersive surround audio format that can accurately represent the entire sound field around the listener. To begin, in Preferences, navigate to Video and Audio I.O. to Immersive Audio and enable Ambisonics. Now, you'll have access to the full Ambisonics toolset so you can create Ambisonic tracks and buses up to fifth order. Use binaural monitoring to experience immersive sound while working with headphones, or choose a monitoring format that matches your delivery requirements and speaker configuration. The Fairlight Ambisonics panner displays 2D or 3D spherical panning within the sound field and can be used to position mono or stereo tracks within the field. Metering options include a single composite bar graph in the mixer and timeline and energy sonar or power displays. Use the space view scope to monitor high order ambisonic sources as they relate to other sounds and the room. Or enable 360 degree viewer mapping in the Fairlight viewer for dynamic graphical metering of either intensity or a sonar style view. There's even support for third-party ambisonic head tracking and plugins. So some really cool updates there for Atmos and ambisonic, if I can even say it right, um, creating audio that's, you know, surrounding you and stuff. Something I haven't gotten into too much, but would love to get in there. Uh, you've probably heard this kind of audio before if you have a pair of those Apple uh, AirPods, right? And you put on the was it spatial mode, I think it is, and it sounds like when you turn your head, things move, and it sounds like it's coming from all around you and stuff. So that stuff is really cool. I almost feel like I need to go sit in on some training for that, but uh, really looking forward to maybe getting into there and trying that out this year a little bit more, um, just checking it out and seeing how we can build sound in a 3D environment. That's really cool. Next thing that you guys are going to like that uh, you guys have been asking for, and I haven't asked for it, but uh, I would love to have it because when I mix live music, I often have a spectrograph or I can see where frequencies are on the EQ as the music or the audio is playing back. And now we have that in DaVinci Resolve 19. So check this out. This is what it looks like. And then I'll share a few thoughts on it. The Fairlight Channel EQ has been updated with real-time analyzer and selectable slope for high pass and low pass filters. Club right here. They're called friends. And sidechain control is now available for capable Fairlight effects and AU and VST plugins. All right, so there you go. You saw the uh, EQ now has a spectrum graph in there so you, we can see where the frequencies are. This does come in handy when you are trying to find a particular frequency that might be giving you some trouble. You're not sure where to look. You're sweeping, but can't really tell. Being able to see the graph on there and where all your different audio frequencies and levels for those frequencies are can be a huge help. Just helps you find things that you might be having issues with. You can see what is going on with your audio. Do I have too much low end, too much top end? Is there something that's peeking out in the middle there that I don't like, I want to get rid of? So that is something that people have been asking for for quite some time. It's kind of like a standard feature on uh, other you know EQs that I've seen and that I've worked with, especially when it comes to live music and stuff. So really excited about having that one in there. I think that's going to be a really handy feature for you guys and for me as well. In the dynamics panel there, you saw now we have updated side chaining abilities, right? So I'm gonna have to get in there and play with it. And I know that this is one of the things that uh, true audio people who mix music and, and uh, do like just audio stuff, a lot of times they want to be able to use the side chain for different effects and different processing of music and things like that. And Resolve was a little limited in the side chaining ability. So now it looks like they did add a, a bunch of, um, I'm going to say versatility and, and usability to the side chain. So I'm going to have to get in there and play with it once we get it, but it looks like uh, it's a good update and it's going in the right direction to really help bring Fairlight full circle into like a full-fledged DAW, similar to some of the other DAWs that, uh, you know, people might be using out there. And maybe, you know, with these features, as they keep adding them in, 
It's going to allow you to go to DaVinci Resolve for all of your music needs, all of your video, pretty much everything, one-stop shop. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how well it works out. I'm curious to get in there and try it out, play with some side chaining and stuff like that. But uh, that's another great feature that I think people from the music world have been asking for for quite some time. And part of the reason why they're not jumping ship over into Fairlight is because the uh, the, the side chaining didn't really work as 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 it does in other audio programs. So that's a big feature, I think, for, you know, audio-specific people that uh, that they've been looking for for quite some time here in Fairlight. So there you have it. That is the audio features that are being updated here in DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, I'm sure there's going to be more stuff in there. They kind of give you a whole list once it comes out, but they just highlight some of the big, big ones in, you know, their live streams and stuff like this. Daria did a great job of running over all of the awesome features the big updates here in DaVinci Resolve 19 in all the different tabs there's a ton of great stuff there also some great hardware that Blackmagic has updated or is putting out that's new really excited to actually get there in person in Vegas uh, starting on Sunday and check out this stuff at Blackmagic Designs booth guys really excited if you're going to be out there make sure you try and find me if you find me say hello i'd love to talk to you and meet you with that said guys thank you so much for tuning in stay tuned as soon as 19 comes out i'm going to be downloading it and uh making videos on the audio stuff but a little bit of everything here along with all my other fellow davinci resolve creators all right guys with that said i look forward to seeing you in the next video i'm off to go pack for nab and uh, i will see you in the next one peace <laughs>